At the Context Trade Show in Las Vegas in November 1996, Microsoft introduced a new platform, the Windows CE operating system platform, which was basically a specification for a range of devices such as what you can see on screen. Devices didn't start shipping until 1997, and this is one of the earlier devices. This is a Casio Cassiopeia A11. So this is the four megabyte version. There was a two megabyte version released as well, and that was called the A10. Now all devices had to keep a common spec. So they all had to have a keyboard, they had to have infrared, they had to have at least a PCMCIA card slot, they had a 480 by 240 resistive touchscreen. The earlier devices had four shades of gray. They also had a serial port and the operating system was stored in ROM. It ran off two AA batteries and those gave approximately 20 hours of use. Now these devices when they came out ranged up anything up to $500 and if you looked at laptops around the time those laptops were in excess of two to three thousand pounds, well out of the reach of a lot of people. Hewlett Packard bucked the trend by introducing a widescreen device. The HP 300 line had a 640 by 240 display rather than the 480 by 240. This aspect ratio was then adopted by most of the other manufacturers. Having a wider device also allowed additional ports. This 300 only has a PC card slot on this side. But its brother, released at the same time, had an additional compact flash card slot. It also had a backlit display which was an interesting green. Over the years, the product line developed and Microsoft went on to release Windows CE 2. Now this device looks identical to the previous two that we've seen. However, this has a 60 megahertz processor and that means it can run Windows CE 2 a lot better than the previous devices, which all had a 44 megahertz Hitachi Super 3 processor. Now, different manufacturers used different processors for these devices. There was a processor from MIPS, which was used in the Philips Velo range. There's the Hitachi SH3, which these devices run. And there was also one more, but the name escapes me at the moment. HP stuck with the Hitachi line of processors and carried on introducing new devices. So here we have the 300LX, the 320LX and the 360LX. At the same time that the 360 was introduced, colour handheld PCs were also being introduced. This is a HP 620LX. This is a 640 by 240 display, the same aspect ratio as the other devices. However, this displays in 256 colors. The processor on this one also has been upgraded to a 75 megahertz Hitachi SH3. All software running from Windows CE 1.0 and 2.0 should run in Windows CE 2.0. Applications for the black and white devices will display grayscale HP continued refining the handheld PC products and then introduced the Jornada line. This is a HP Jornada 690. This runs a later version of Windows CE. This is Windows CE 2.11, but it's also still running on the Hitachi SH3 processor line. This time it's clocked at 133 MHz. The display again is a 640 by 240 aspect ratio and out of the box it shipped running 256 colours. However, HP released a driver that allowed the display to run at 65,000 colours. Windows CE was released in multiple languages including Portuguese, Spanish and Japanese. 
This device here runs Windows CE 1.01, which is a Japanese only version of Windows CE. Other manufacturers began to experiment with other form factors, such as HP, Packard Bell, Compaq, and NEC had released devices that looked rather much more like traditional laptops. Let me just clear some room. Here is a HP Jornada 820. This resembles a small laptop. This time we have a 640 by 240 display. Again, 256 colors, but HP has finally done away with the SH3 processor, and this is running an Intel StrongArm SA1100. It meant some of the software that you used to run on the old devices no longer worked. That was one of the problems with Windows CE. Different processor architectures could not run the same software and software had to be compiled for each platform. Therefore, if you had a different processor and wanted to beam an application to your friend, they would not be able to run it. They would have to run the version compiled for their processor. So this is interesting because it no longer has a touch screen, but it has a trackpad and track buttons. We have a speaker on the front, and we have a battery that lasted between eight and 10 hours, depending on use. The screen technology for these devices generally is quite terrible. The screen takes a few moments to warm up. And when it does, moving the mouse around the screen shows terrible lag. It's almost as if mouse trails are turned on. The software in ROM included pocket versions of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and a Microsoft PowerPoint viewer. Solitaire came pre-installed on the ROM. Third party applications were developed, as well as first party applications such as Microsoft Paint, which allows you allows you to draw or manipulate bitmap images. The familiar Windows 95 slash Windows 98 interface made it easy to move from Windows CE to a traditional desktop PC or laptop and back again. You have the same concept, my handheld PC is analogous to my computer my documents recycle bin. There was even Pocket Internet Explorer, an inbox application, a calendar application, a contacts and a task application. And these would all synchronize via a serial cable related devices via USB or infrared to a desktop computer. We have a run command, help, settings, control panel. And the control panel allows you to customize the settings of your device. This device has 16 megabytes of memory, which is divided between storage and program memory. The problem with this kind of memory is it's volatile, which means power constantly needs to be provided, otherwise you will lose your data. This can be dynamically assigned using this slider bar. Above the keyboard, there are hotkeys which allow you to quickly jump into applications. Here's a basic word processor. Included in the system are six fonts. Additional fonts can be synchronized over from your desktop PC.
embedded images could also be placed inside these documents. We choose a new document from a template. You'll see here's an embedded image. This version of Pocket Word came with a spell check. The version in Windows C 1.0 didn't. It allows for the creation of basic Word documents and viewing of documents synchronised over from your PC. The file format is Pocket Word document. Which when synchronised to your PC would be converted over to a Word document. But there are other file formats available. This is Pocket Excel and it included about a hundred different formulas. You couldn't however insert graphs or do complicated formula. So why do I like Windows CE so much? Well, when I was about 13, 13 or 14, my father bought me the HP 300LX for Christmas. And at the time we had a desktop PC, but the fact that I could take Windows with me wherever I went was amazing. Also, we couldn't afford the two to three thousand pounds for a laptop. Now there were some caveats. The HP 300LX only had two megabytes of memory. And as I discussed earlier, if you went into the system settings, you would have to set a certain amount of memory to program memory as well as storage. So that immediately cut the two megabytes of memory in half. So I only had one megabyte of storage. Using some money that I received from Christmas, I purchased a four megabyte compact flash card, which at the time was the most popular flash media device. However, my device didn't have a compact flash card slot. So I had to use it with a PCMCA card slot adapter. Now you'll notice this is only four megabytes. At the time, HP released a four and a 10 megabyte compact flash card. However, these were incredibly expensive. This one, I believe, was about 50 pounds. The 10 megabyte card was well over 100 and out of my reach. Having a memory card was vital for a device with such limited memory. Also, the problem with Windows CE, because the memory is volatile, if you ever lose power, that's it, all your data's gone. As soon as power is restored, you have to set the device up from scratch. Now, luckily, the setup is very simple, doesn't take very long. Because this device doesn't have a touch screen, we won't, won't have to calibrate the display. So it asks for the time and date. It asks for your home city, the option to set owner properties and display when you power it on. And that was basically it. So the HP 300LX was powered by two AA batteries. When those were removed, the contents of the memory was stored by a CR2032 battery. Synchronization of the device was done via serial cable. The default connection speed is 19,200 BPS, but could be increased to 115,200, which increased synchronization speed by up to five times. Copying data backwards and forwards over serial is time consuming, but less so once the board rate has been set. The infrared port could be used to beam information between devices. You could share files through Windows Explorer, or you could share contacts from the contacts application. Now, as I said, we couldn't afford a laptop, so the handheld PC for me was amazing. I had my own little device I could take with me wherever I wanted, and of course play Solitaire, which is included in the ROM. The problem with these devices, however, is they were so underpowered. There is no hardware acceleration for the graphics, therefore the CPU is used to draw whatever is on screen. The applications in ROM are very limited and are very basic in terms of what you would find on a desktop PC. I learned to write HTML on my 300LX as the built-in Internet Explorer, or Pocket Internet Explorer as it was called on my device, allowed me to create HTML pages 
learn about hyperlinks, create tables. There was no frame support. There was no animated GIF support. Images could be a GIF, bitmap, or the proprietary 2BP, which is a handheld PC only bitmap format or JPEG. There was no ping support. Now this display is of very low quality. This display is of very low quality and it's only 256 colors. So I became a wizard at dithering. This is Death Valley this year. This is Forest Gump Point on a holiday this year. And if I zoom in, you'll see that this image is a 256 color image, but it's been processed in Photoshop and the number of colors reduced. And here we have the Golden Gate Bridge. On screen the picture probably doesn't look too bad but in person the colours are very washed out and they don't really resemble true to life colour. The pop-up that's displayed on the screen any Windows CE user will be familiar with. Basically it's complaining that the backup battery is running low and that if we don't replace it soon we'll probably lose some data. However I know that these are two new coin cell batteries and they're fine there's a, a slight problem with this device probably due to its age. I used to live in a village in Suffolk and I used to have to once a month go to my mentors as I was doing an MVQ qualification. Because I lived in a village, the frequency of the train service wasn't very often. And therefore, by the time I got to the office, all of the PCs were being used by other people being mentored. So I used to take my HP 300 LX and I used to do my work on that using Microsoft Pocket Paint and Microsoft Pocket Word to create documents and network diagrams which we used for evidence for my MVQ. As I said, I also learned HTML. My dad bought me a HTML4 for Dummies book I used to learn how to write web pages from scratch. My sister also took the 300 LX to university with her and she'd use it to write notes on while in lectures. So for us, we have very fond memories of Windows CE. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.